Hello, and welcome back to another Commission Corner. My name's Josh from the Arcane Forge, and in these videos, I like to draw your characters. I select a member of my Patreon backers completely at random every single month. I ask for a little bit of information about your character, and then I get to draw one of your characters from D&D, whether they're an NPC, the actual character that you play in a game, or something along those lines. And we get to talk about why you love them so much, and how I can translate that into something that we get to look at. So let's get started with today's video. And let's get drawing. So today's commission was for Jonathan Foster, or rather for Jonathan Foster's sister. Jonathan Foster is one of my uh, longest standing and most active patrons on Patreon, which is why I was sort of surprised when he actually won this month's Patreon commission raffle. The raffle I use like a random number generator that picks from anyone in my Patreon list every single month to see who's going to come up and get a commission. And that can be anyone from the sort of one dollar just dropping in to say hi and thanks level all the way up to the very highest levels. And obviously there's a lot more people at the lower end of that scale. So I had simply assumed that this was going to be someone at that end. But it was a really pleasant surprise when Jonathan Foster's name came out of a hat because I already know this guy really well. We have a lot of video chats. He's at my highest pledge level where we have video chats every month. We talk really regularly and I feel like I know him and his characters and what his D&D campaigns are usually like. So a lot of the prep, a lot of the kind of uh, questions that I have to ask when I'm drawing a commission for someone were already answered in advance, essentially. However, instead of one of his own characters, Jonathan asked instead that I would draw his sister's character, Rowan, a blue dragonborn. She apparently plays this character or some variation of it in every single campaign that they run. She really likes how sorcerers work, she really likes the idea of the dragonborn, she likes lightning stuff, she likes the colour blue, so Rowan is her go-to character. This posed a really interesting challenge because although I know Jonathan, I don't know his sister. And he kind of wanted this to be a bit of a surprise for her, so, I mean, surprise if you're watching. I hope you enjoy the video. But I did have an opportunity to get to know her and her character and see how Rowan behaves in-game. When I was moving house, I was without the internet for a really long time. I would say about six months or so, which was really nightmarish and my Patreon was still active at this time, so there were a few people who I was receiving money from for these one-on-one -on -one chats that I couldn't deliver on because I didn't have internet to chat to them. You know, we could have talked over my phone or whatever, but I would have been using data, and we discussed it between myself and each of these patrons during that time about what they wanted to do, whether they wanted to save them up or have me draw some commissions for them, something that felt like the appropriate value for the money that they were spending. I offered to refund a lot of these people during this time, which very kindly none of them took me up on. But I worked out deals with each of these people who had been missing out on time that they were paying for to kind of figure out what seemed like a fitting compensation, whether it was just we have a lot of chats or I do commissions or something along those lines. Jonathan was one such person who had this sort of build-up of accrued time and the arrangement that we reached was a really interesting one. He suffers from the affliction that a lot of us D&D players know, which is being the forever DM. He'd been playing for years and years and years and had never actually played the game. He'd always been the DM. He lives in the middle of nowhere and the only people that are close enough by that are also big nerds are his family, which is really sweet getting to play D&D with your family. But once you get entrenched in this role, I think we can all agree that there's that one person who, whenever you go around and play board games, you just hand them the rule book, and they are essentially the de facto leader and so on. We're going to put the emphasis on you to learn these rules and tell us how to do it. It's not great, but it does happen, and that's certainly the same sort of thing that happens with the Forever DM, and Jonathan is definitely among their number. So I suggested that why don't we play a virtual game together. Uh, he lives in the States, and obviously I'm here in Scotland, so we couldn't meet in person, but I suggested why don't we 
play a one-shot that I've written in advance. I have a kind of uh, intro to D&D one-shot. A couple of them here or there because there are a few people who I know who are interested in D&D but had never really played it. And it's nice to have that kind of an opportunity to explore a lot of different stuff in D&D when you're just starting out. So I suggested uh, why don't I DM for him? He would get to be a player and he can invite his family and we can all play a one-shot together going through a dungeon using the time that he had accrued, which he sounded enthusiastic about. So uh, we decided to go ahead with that, and I was introduced to his sister, her two sons, and I finally got to meet Rowan the Dragonborn, who I'd heard about. Now, John and his family play a very different kind of D&D to the kind of groups that I'm used to. When I DM, I'm primarily interested in role-playing. I'm primarily interested in interactions between characters, between NPCs and the players. I play a sort of detective-style game for the most part, with combat being sparingly used, although important. And Jonathan's mentioned that his family aren't really interested in that. That's something that he's very interested in, but they're mostly interested in dungeon crawling. They like to play the game a bit more like a computer game, I guess where they're moving from room to room, defeating monsters, collecting treasure, very fourth edition kind of uh, play style. And I suppose really kind of what the original idea behind D&D was, the Munchkin-esque, I kick the door down, I fight the monster, I get the gold, we complete the adventure. So I finagled my story a little bit to allow both what I know that uh, Jonathan's family enjoy and also have a few more role-playing elements so that Jonathan can stretch his wings and uh, indulge his role-playing muscle a little bit. And we had an adventure in an old tavern where some retired adventurers have set up a kind of faux dungeon in their basement so that they could prepare adventurers, new adventurers, for the coming realities of what it's like to be an adventurer, the real deadliness and harshness, while still having a few bumpers and soft pads here and there around them, so that their first encounter with an owlbear might not necessarily be a lethal one. It was a bit of a dungeon crawl, but they also got a lot of time to chat to the inhabitants of this tavern, buy from the shop, and create some really inventive ways to bypass the dungeon and make their own traps and security measures and so on, while still holding true to this, you know, going down a somewhat linear path, exploring individual rooms and sort of, I suppose, Zelda dungeon-esque, making your way from room to room with a lot of focus on combat. Jonathan Foster's family were not... Um, very familiar with the role-playing side of things, so I was very keen to ask a lot of questions that would help paint a picture in their minds of what was going on, and to establish their characters a little bit more and ground them in the world. Some of the players were more receptive to this than others, but I did manage to get a few tidbits of information about Rowan, who's the important person here because I'm drawing their character, so I had to know a few details about who I was drawing other than simply a blue dragonborn sorceress. For starters, I asked if Rowan has any distinguishing features, because the dragonborn, at least in their player's handbook iterations, have things like tentacles and so on. So I wanted to know if we were keeping with player's handbook style dragonborn, you know, was she a blue dragon in name only, having sort of brown or orange scales, but having this lightning breath weapon and so on? Or are we going for the more creative, no, this is a blue dragon, so they have blue scales, and so on. And I was told that Rowan indeed does have really shiny blue scales as well, and actually has a plume of white hair, which I thought was really interesting. I think hair looks quite nice on a dragonborn. I asked if she wore robes, and if like a dragon, because she's a, got a chromatic dragon background, does she like to wear very illustrious and opulent clothing? Is she obsessed with hoarding treasure and so on? And I was told that Rowan was far more down to earth and actually like a lot more freedom in her movement. So she would wear baggy sort of street clothes with a lot of range of movement and not robes. And they were fairly plain as well. They weren't overly decorated. So I chose to give her a few different layers to make these sort of like draped clothes and also to have a lot of puff in these kind of loose clothes that maybe become tight around the wrists and ankles again so that nothing's getting in the way when she's trying to run. Seems like a very practical outfit for a sorceress. One of the things I really like to do in campaigns, especially with spellcasters, is to ask them what their spell signature is. It's a piece of terminology that my first DM introduced to me, and it opened up the role-playing experience for me, allowed me to visualize D&D a lot more easily. 
And for those who don't include this in campaigns, I would highly recommend it. But a spell signature is what makes your spells unique to you. How do you cast spells that make them something that only you cast? So for example, a cleric of the light domain might cast a spell, and this would appear as light shining through stained glass, perhaps. All of their magic rings and circles look like stained glass windows, perhaps a choir of angels can be heard behind them, perhaps it's always an amber light, like a glorious sunrise. Maybe whenever your necromancer casts a spell, they always have this green tinge to it, maybe all of your fire magic is green or blue. Maybe when you cast Magic Missile, it's a series of black ravens that swoop in and fly to damage someone. If you're particularly avian-based, casting darkness might cause a smoky raven to rise up out of the ground, trailing behind it this curtain of black smoke behind it that blinds all those who are within its path, and so on. And Jonathan Sissa was slightly hesitant about this, but I mentioned that blue dragons are far more lightning attuned, and she said she liked the sound of that, so we kind of went along the lines of the spells that she chose to cast having a lightning theme to them visibly. So I'll actually be drawing her casting magic missile here, plucking one of the missiles from this ring of runes that she's about to unleash, and it having this kind of lightning-like feel to it because of her blue dragon ancestry. I asked her what her spell casting focus might look like, because when you choose a character, obviously you get a choice between a component pouch if you want to think, make things feel a bit more kind of gritty and grounded in reality, where you are expending material components to cast spells, or you can have a spell casting focus, which eliminates that entirely and makes things feel a little bit more like you are the magical person rather than the objects that you're using fuel your spells. This was something she'd not considered either, and it was actually her son who stepped in and said that it should be perhaps like a spell book. I said that this could look like anything you wanted, as long as it was holdable in your hand, although you didn't have to hold it in your hand. In older campaigns, I've used familiars as my spellcasting focus. I've had my hat be a spellcasting focus that I would have to touch the brim of it before I could cast a spell and so on. And he said it might be a great idea if a book that looked like a spell book was perhaps her spell casting focus, but it was actually a recipe book that her grandmother had passed down. It would float magically around her, granting her strength and magical resolve as well. So I really like that idea that perhaps Rowan looks to an observer a bit like a wizard, but it's actually her draconic ancestry. And this spell casting focus is actually just a recipe book rather than a magic tome. But I thought I would draw that anyway. And it seemed like a really nice idea to kind of, if it was her grandmother, who's also presumably a dragon, born, making this look imposing with some flames and some draconic patterns and faces and things like that all over the place. I thought this seemed like a really fun idea. There were some other little tidbits as well that uh, were volunteered. Apparently Rowan keeps a key around her waist, which was a trinket that she earned in character creation, and she likes to wear very muted tones to her clothing as well. So hopefully I've managed to capture Rowan, this character who comes up in every campaign, and hopefully this will immortalize her. But I really enjoyed uh, getting to DM for these guys. It was utterly, utterly, insanely different from how I usually play, but that's half the fun of D&D, is meeting new people and seeing how they play as well. And I hope you enjoyed this adventure, watching me create this character. If you did, make sure to leave a little like down below, perhaps favourite this video, and share it with the rest of your party. If you'd like to be entered into the Commission Corner raffle, then head over to Patreon, because patrons at all levels get an equal opportunity to be picked from the hat and have their character illustrated. And until next time, have a wonderful day, happy adventuring, and happy monster hunting.